We can learn a lot from artists like Corita Kent, whose art was called blasphemous while she was a nun. I want to talk about this idea of thinking like an artist and how that might impact our work and lives, whatever we do. Now, most of us don't think of ourselves as artists, but like Picasso said, every child is an artist. The problem is how to remain an artist once we grow up. Thinking like an artist doesn't necessarily mean painting or sculpting or music or theater. Rather, it's an approach, it's an attitude. And thinking like an artist is relevant to a robust life, no matter our interests or work. Corita Kent was born in 1918 to a poor working class family. And at the age of 18, and with limited alternatives, she entered the Sisters of Immaculate Heart in Los Angeles, which was known for being relatively progressive and creative. After getting her master's degree at the University of Southern California, Sister Corita Kent became the head of the art department at Immaculate Heart College and taught a variety of painting styles. At one point, she sent away for a do-it-yourself silk screening kit because she thought screen printing was broadly appealing and the screen prints were pretty affordable to most everyone. And then she taught herself how to do it. Screen printing art had historically been fairly simple, but Kent creatively began combining words and colors in bold artistic ways, and she used it to express her beliefs about people and society. And her classes were fun and engaging. She was known for inventive teaching strategies and challenging assignments. She took her students on field trips. She had them use viewfinders to discover new perspectives or would have them draw their own arm without even looking at it. Her classes drew people from all around the country, even people outside the church, including the director, Alfred Hitchcock, the inventor, Buckminster Fuller, and the musical composer, John Cage. Kent came up with a list of 10 rules that encouraged hard work and productivity for the art department. One of them was, the only rule is work. If you work, it will lead to something. It's the people who do all the work, all the time, who eventually catch on to things. Kent's art promoted love and tolerance, and perhaps because she was a woman and a nun, she never really got the attention she deserved. And despite the fact that her work was beautiful and contained nothing but positive messages, there was a time when the school was called liberal and communist, and Kent's work was labeled blasphemous. As a result, Sister Corita Kent returned to secular life in 1968. Corita Kent said, not all of us are painters, but we are all artists. Each time we fit things together, we are creating, whether it's to make a loaf of bread, a child, or a day. So, how can we think more like an artist and what's to be gained by doing so? Well, firstly, be a creator. There's a big difference between being a consumer and being a creator. Being a consumer is basically passive. It's watching, listening, scrolling. For the most part, you just let the entertainment wash over you. There's little work and no judgment or risk. Being a consumer is easy, and most everyone is encouraging you to be a consumer. Certainly the people in businesses selling what you're consuming. On the other side, being a creator involves thinking and work. Figuring out what you're doing in the first place and then there's all those uncertain steps moving forward. Being a creator means subjecting yourself to criticism and to the real possibility that your work will fall flat. Despite these challenges, you want to spend a good deal of time being a creator. When you're creating, you're learning, improving, and contributing. You move into the realm of the thinkers, builders, and doers, and you do the work despite the struggle. You'll connect with what's uniquely you and understand what Emerson meant by envy is ignorance, imitation is suicide, which is why another one of Corita Kent's rules was Nothing is a mistake. There's no win and no fail. There is only make. 
you'll see differently. Creating art has a way of forcing you to look closely. And by doing so, you'll see things that you'd never noticed before. It was only after I mixed a couple shades of green to paint a landscape that I noticed while outside running that there's actually an infinite variety of green hues and gradations in the grasses and leaves. <laughs> Somehow, I never noticed before. And skin is not black or white, but mixed hues of blues, reds, and yellows. The human eye can distinguish about 10 million different colors, yet many people experience the world in terms of an eight crayon box. Thinking more like an artist, approaching your work creatively, and always looking for new approaches and improvements increases your insight and your understanding. It's like having a much bigger box of crayons. Lastly, change yourself. We generally take it as a compliment when somebody we haven't seen for a long while says, well, you haven't changed at all. But artists know it's necessary to change. Maybe the biggest benefit of thinking like an artist is the way in which you'll change. Humility, because your work, at least in the beginning, won't be very good. Courage, because artists aren't afraid to try new things and explore new approaches. In 1954, when Jasper Johns was 24 years old, he destroyed all of his artwork. Destroying his work energized his creativity, and it allowed him to break free from the art he'd been making. A short while later, he had a vivid dream of himself painting the American flag. And that morning, he got up, he gathered paint, fabric, and newspapers to paint what he'd dreamed about. Years later, looking back, John said he destroyed all his work because it was time to stop becoming and to be an artist. Now, we don't need to destroy our past work to move forward, but it is a powerful metaphor for letting go of our past if it's not helping us. There's a great song called Invisible by the band U2, and I've always loved the lyrics. I finally found my real name. I won't be me when you see me again. I'm more than you know, more than you see here, a body and soul which is what George Bernard Shaw meant when he wrote, life isn't about finding yourself, it's about creating yourself. So think like an artist and create yourself.